Thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, my dear colleagues on the dais and uh, dear uh, participants. This is my third visit uh, to NIRV. And I can uh, straightway tell you that uh, Mr. Rao does not give me a better food than uh, all you have been getting in the last 10 days. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll just uh, say a few points. Of course, uh, a lot has been uh, said and talked about. Uh, and uh, on the dais, I find uh, the copy, copy holders, copyrights holders and patent holders of NRLM are on the dais. <laughs> so they are the they are the people who really uh, uh, conceived and designed and sort of uh, took it forward. The I don't think I would be able to add much to that. But I can I can tell you uh, an overall perspective that we have in the ministry. When I came onto this scene on the first of October. I was told that uh, the ministry has four flexi programs. <coughs> I'm sure you must be aware of all these four flexi programs. Uh, just to name, that is uh, Manrega. Then we have PMGSY, and then we have IAY, and then of course NRLM. These four programs constitute our anti-poverty strategy. But I have no hesitation in saying that NRLM is the most significant of these four programs. And there are reasons for that. I'll, I'll come to that. Uh, concept of NRLM and its design and its uh, strategy. It is a qualitatively different program from the earlier programs that, that were implemented in this country. It is a program of the poor, by the poor and for the poor. This is very, very important. And this has come out very, very clearly just now, that it is the only poor people who would implement this program, we are all facilitators out there. And unless we are convinced that the poor people have the innate capacity and capability to come out of poverty, we cannot, we cannot successfully implement this program. Each one of us has to believe that it's the poor who can come out of poverty by their own efforts. We are only there to facilitate, to build capacity, and to build these uh, institutions or platforms of the poor. So that is the first uh, point that I would like to make. <coughs> it's very, very critical. Perhaps the program before did not emphasize this point as explicitly as this program does. And why do we say that? It's a vast country and there is no way, there is no way, at least I don't believe, there is no way that the government functionary, including the local self-government, can achieve this task. This task is a very complex task. This has to be accomplished only by involving the poor people. Everybody says that, look, I'm not getting into how much of money meant for poor people is really reaching that. But this is the program. This is the program which will make sure, maybe eight years down the line or ten years down the line or maybe uh, fifteen years down the line, 
that all benefits intended for the poor people do reach them, do reach them in a timely and effective manner. Now, poverty. I mean, you, it's, it's, it's a shame for all of us. It's a shame for all of us that this country still has poverty after 66 years of independence. Somebody mentioned that. And when I looked at this uh, presentation by uh, Murli, it mentions hope that poverty will go away. No, no, that's not enough. That is just not enough. We don't hope. We have to make sure that the poverty goes away. And poverty goes away with the full and active involvement of the people themselves, as I mentioned. So that is the first point in so far as the NRLM is concerned. Now the second point NRLM, why it is so different from the earlier programs is that it is a dynamic program. It's an evolving program. It's a flexible program. And it does allow, it does allow the flexibility or customization that needs to be sort of made given a local context or a specific situation. Therefore, this program has inbuilt flexibility as, as was designed and as, as I was told when it went to the cabinet, we, we built in this uh, uh, flexibility. So therefore, uh, we need not uh, sort of re reinvent this program and we would allow all the states to bring in these uh, flexibilities wherever uh, you think that they would be necessary. And every year, you know, we would build on this uh, program. Uh, that is the second aspect of this program. Now, the third aspect of this program is the uh, convergence. You see, when I came to the ministry, uh, I, I found that uh, not much of convergence uh, is being talked about. Why I am saying so? You see, NRLM talks about uh, the need to uh, deepen and enhance livelihood options. I mean, at a stage when uh, states come to that level, there are states like Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Bihar, and some other states are also catching up now. Now, in this uh, aspect, uh, you have to bring in convergence. Otherwise, uh, what will happen that uh, livelihood options may not be sustainable. And if they are not sustainable, then we may not be able to uh, eliminate poverty on a sustainable basis. Like Narega. Now you see, if you do not strengthen the natural resource base under Narega, which will be uh, quite handy in uh, strengthening the livelihood options. Somebody talked about uh, sanitation. Now, unless you bring about a convergence between, let's say, Narega and NBA <coughs> to cater to this huge requirement of sanitation in our rural areas, there is uh, no way uh, another alone can sort of, you know, look after uh, this uh, sanitation aspect. Convergence is the uh, third point. Now the fourth point is, it has to be a grand partnership or alliance. It was talked about here. Now Kerala has done a remarkable job. I come from Kerala Kadal, so I know that. Uh, they have done it in collaboration with PRIs. Because all of you know that Kerala has been a kind of pioneer state in strengthening PRIs. Whereas uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, that is not the case. Uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, PRIs have yet to come to a level. 
But if you look at the likely scenario in this country in the next 10 to 15 years, <coughs> there is no way we can uh, escape the PRIs. PRIs are the future of this country. Uh, therefore, this program has to collaborate very intensely with PRIs. Or I would say, in fact, PRIs need to collaborate with this program. That is, uh, that is the uh, point. The next point which uh, strikes me so uh, clearly is uh, the leadership. Now, September I had gone to Harvard uh, Kennedy School. It was a one week program. When, what they told us in one week, I'm just telling you, just in one or two sentences, that there is a very clear difference between exercising authority and exercising leadership. Now, all of us exercise our authority given the job description and whatever we are supposed to do. But if you want to exercise leadership, you have to go beyond your uh, formal authority or mandate. You have to exceed the boundaries of your uh, defined mandate or authority. <coughs> that is leadership. And this leadership has nothing to do with the level or the assignment at which you are working. This leadership can be exercised at any level, irrespective of the position that you hold. So each one of us has to be a leader in this sense of the term. And this again is not enough. As Vijay Kumar was saying that we have to create local leaders. And remarkable work has been done. Last year when I was here, I had a meeting with the 50, 60 community resource persons from Andhra Pradesh. They have gone around. They have, uh, these women living behind their families have gone around and spent months at a stretch to relate their own stories as to how they have come out of poverty to the women in these uh, other states. I mean, I couldn't believe. And I told them that the kind of work that you are doing, I have never done in my entire career of 35 years. I felt so shameful. Uh, <coughs> These women have gone to even Jain K. And the kind of situation they faced there, uh, they were taken as what spies of intelligence agencies. They were, uh, they were told, no, 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 you have come from India. And uh, why should we talk to you? And uh, they were also threatened, physical threats. Yet, you know, they went ahead. And today, Vijay Kumar tells me that uh, the kind of work that is happening in JNK. Some of these women have come to Haryana, my own place. They come to uh, a block in Bhivani. Mr. Sharma is here. <coughs> and it is hell of a task, I can tell you, in Haryana to sense.